Hi. In this video, we'll learn how to make a two to four decoder using the ISC design suite. So the first step will be to open the ISC design suite program. So you should see something like this when you open this program for the first time. In order to create a new project, create a new project with, let's name this test three. And be sure to select schematic in this drop down menu. Here you'll be asked to select one of the Xilinx FPGA families for your design. So the Spartan 3 is one of the most common ones and we use the Spartan 3 in the form of the basis 2 board at Texas Tech. So you can go ahead and select that FPGA and this will show you which simulator you want to tie your project with. In this case we will be using iSim which is the default simulator that's tied with the IAC design tools. Finish and here you'll see your empty project. Now you'll have to add a new source and this will be your schematic file. So let's name this test3 schematic. Okay, so your schematic file is created and this, this white space over here is your workspace. Here in this navigation bar, you can navigate between these different menus like your model or your project hierarchy, your associated files, libraries, and symbols that you want to add to your schematic. For a 2 to 4 decoder, we're going to need two, 2 inverters and 4 AND gates. So in order to do this, we'll need to go in here and select the logic menu. And here, in, here below in the symbols, you'll see a bunch of logic gates. So for our our schematic where we're going to need a 2 input AND gate. So the AND2 is a 2 input AND gate. We're going to go ahead and place four of those AND gates like so. And then we'll need two inverters. Place them as so. I'll just zoom in for a better view. Okay, in order to test the schematic, we're going to need input and output ports to connect our test module. In order to do this, you'll have to select the add IO markers. And in case of an input marker, you'll select the, the input add input marker and click on the terminal you want to add the marker to, like so. Now, since I have not exactly built the whole schematic, I'm just going to skip forward in the next part of the video to the completed schematic and show you how to create a test bench for the completed schematic. Okay, so this is my completed schematic and as you've noticed I have changed the port names to the standard names that are used in truth tables and you can also change your port names by basically double clicking on the port and under this option you will be able to edit the name of this port okay so in order to check if our design is correct, we can go navigate to the design tab. 
and make sure you've saved everything and then you'll see this little green triangle here light up and you'll click on this to synthesize your design what it's now doing is checking for the syntax of this design checking whether the inputs and outputs are all connected and whether it's a it's an appropriate design that can actually be integrated on a FPGA the rest of these the implementation and mapping and translation is related more to the specific FPGA that we selected which is in this case the Spartan 3 e so even if you don't get a check sign over here in the implementation don't worry much because as long as your design synthesizes we should be able to simulate it without any problems it's it's only going to be a problem if you decide to turn this into FPGA or like into ASIC so here we have the green check signs which means everything is good everything is good. now in order to create a test bench you'll select the module and add a new source here we'll select the Verilog test fixture and you can name it test 3 score TB next and here it will ask you which module you want to associate this test bench with so in this case this is our main module so make sure you've selected this module Hit next and finish now it will do all the work and generate a test bench which has some of these things specified here which are basically the inputs and output ports specified in Verilog so you don't have to actually write this down the the program will generate this for you so in this initial block the program will initially give us zero and zero to the inputs and then we have to add our own values in order to test our decoder so I'm going to use the standard truth table that I found off of Wikipedia and basically give these combinations of ones and zeros to the input pins alright so I've made the, the initial program and integrated it into the default test bench so basically what I've done is added a second initial block with these values in it so what this program does is basically wait 10 nanoseconds and set the inputs as 0 and 1 then it waits another 10 nanoseconds to set it to 1 and 0 and so on so this hash 10 basically tells the program to wait for 10 nanoseconds the time scale of this program is decided based on the time scale command that's up here at the top. Here the time scale is shown as one nanosecond. So basically you'll know that the time scale is going to be in nanoseconds. The other thing that you would notice is once you've generated a test bench under your design tab you'll see these two buttons that have appeared so if you click on the simulation button you'll see that there's two different modules so the UUT will be your original module where your schematic is and the the second module is going to be your test bench so what UUT means is unit under test so as we're testing this schematic it's designated as a unit under test 
so in order to see if our test bench is good to go, we need to do a behavioral check by double clicking on this option here. And we have a green check sign, which means the, the program that we wrote works. In order to generate a proper test simulation, we'll double click on the simulate behavioral model here. And the iSIM program will automatically launch, which is here. Okay, so here you would see that this is our completed simulation. You can click on this magnifying glass to see the exact time of the whole simulation. So as you can see, the simulation was run for a thousand nanoseconds, but it seems all the action has happened in this little time slot here. So in order to make this a smaller simulation, you can you can go back to your Xilinx and right click on the simulate behavioral model and click on process properties. Here you can select the time for your simulation, the runtime. So here I've selected the runtime. Let's say we can put it as 100 nanoseconds and hit OK. Okay, so now we're going to run the simulation with the reduced time, reduced runtime. And as you can see, now the runtime is reduced to 100 nanoseconds. So now you can clearly see what's happening after we give different inputs. So basically, you can now see that when we had an input of one, let's say, and one and zero, the output was zero, zero, one, zero. So based on this, you can compare these values over here to your truth table and confirm that your module actually works. And that's pretty much it as far as the testing goes. All right, so this is a quick video on how to design and simulate a multiplexer on the Xilinx IC design tools. So I'm assuming you've watched the previous video and know how to make schematics on Xilinx IC design tools. So I used the same methods I used before to build this schematic for a multiplexer. What a multiplexer does is based on the select line input, it will select between either A or B input as the output. So it's a very simple schematic, which basically includes two AND gates, an inverter, and an OR gate. So let's quickly go through how to build a test bench for this schematic. So as mentioned earlier, I have already made a test fixture for this schematic and it will be under the simulations tab. So this is what the test fixture looks like. So the initial block will include the zero inputs at first and then the second initial block will begin where with 10 nanoseconds of delay I have set the, the inputs as A, A to be one and B to be zero for both the instances. And the only thing that's going to change is the select line input, which is zero at first and one afterwards. So this will demonstrate how the circuit beh behaves based on the select line input. So let's go ahead and simulate this test bench. Okay. So I've done a 50 nanosecond simulation here so that it's more clear. Now, as you can see, at first, the select line input is zero. So the output comes from B, which is zero, as said initially. And now 
I have set the select line to be 1, which means now I'll take the output from A. So the output is 1. And that's it. That's a short presentation of the of how a multiplexer works on Xilinx. Thank you.